Jared Poland, Fro Knows Photo.com, and I'm here with a guide to the Nikon D5100. First off, if you just picked one up, congratulations on picking up your Nikon D5100. What I'm going to do in part one, which is this, I'm gonna run through the camera what the different buttons mean, what they actually do, um, the basics of the camera, what you're looking at, where the battery goes, simple things. They may be simple for some of you, but they may be new to some of those people who just picked up their very first digital SLR. So let's pretty much get into this. Uh, by the way, if you are looking for more information, you can always sign up for the Frono's Photo email list on fronosphoto.com. You'll get a free book uh, on capturing motion in low light situations or subscribe to the channel right here on YouTube to get all the videos as they're released so that you can get the uh, latest information to help you grow as a photographer. So let's get into the camera. This is a Nikon D5100. Uh, as you look at the camera, you can feel it. It's, you know, it's pretty small. This isn't a review. This is a guide to show you what each button does. Let's just start with the back of the camera. We'll start on the very back. You see the menu button with a green button next to well, a green dot. The menu button is what you press in order to see different menu settings. It's pretty simple. That's where you're going to get everything. Uh, the little, I guess it's a it looks like a little circle next to it. This circle is an IR receiver. There is one on the front and one on the back. So if you have a remote, one of the wireless Nikon remotes, it will be able, you'll be able to stand behind the camera and trigger it as well as in front of the camera and trigger it because there is one right here on the front of the camera. Now that's something that will come in handy when you are shooting wirelessly or if you're in front of the camera doing a group shot and you want to be in it, you want to press the button and have line of sight. In some of the older models, they only had it in the front, so you had to really angle the remote to get the picture right. So that is that. Below there, most of the back of the camera is taken up by this three inch rotatable screen. As you can see, it rotates. Do not rotate it all the way if it stops because then you will just break it. Um, the point of this screen is to allow you to basically not be beholden to the viewfinder. You can hold the camera at multiple angles to photograph. That's why it articulates and it rotates. Um, I would probably just leave it open the whole time or face out with the screen because that's that's how most of the digital SLRs are. You, I mean you can rotate it back and and basically keep it protected. It's going to protect the screen, but when you shoot a picture or you're shooting video and you want to see it, you're going to have to have the screen out like this. This is a great screen. It's a very high quality screen. Um, I wouldn't recommend putting a screen protector on it. Some of you guys may have heard people trying to tell you you need a screen protector on it. You know, it's pretty good. I mean, it's plastic, but still, it's going to clean off pretty well with a lens cloth. Um, I don't really put any extra screen protectors on my screens. Uh, so the articulating screen is going to be good for doing videos at low angles, videos at high angles. Some of you may want to take live view shots where you're not looking through the camera because you need to shoot over a crowd. That's where it's going to come in handy because it rotates like this and allows you to hold it over your head. I don't always recommend shooting with live view for stills, uh, but for video that's what you're going to do. Right next to the screen you have a sideways triangle. That is your play button. That is what you press to review your images after you take them. Below there you have the up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, select, start selector. Uh, basically that's how you change your focusing points in the camera. It's also how you get through the menu system. It's also how you rotate through the images and the OK button is basically your enter button. It's how you select something or say, OK, I want to lock that in. Below there you have a magnifying glass with a plus on it. So when you're reviewing your images, you hit the plus button and then it zooms in on the image. Also if you're set up to do video and you hit the zoom in button, it's going to help you focus better because it's going to zoom in on just where your box is. Below there you have a minus magnifying glass and a checkerboard. If you're reviewing your images and you just have one of them up there and you press, press the minus button a few times, you're going to see that four images will show up on screen and then more images will show up on screen and then a ton of images will show up on screen uh, if you are wanting to review that many images. There's also a question mark there. What is the question mark? Well when you're in the menu mode, as you'll see in part two when I go through the menus in the camera, if you hit, the, if you hit that button, 
and the question mark is blinking in the bottom corner of the screen, it's basically like a built-in user's guide. So if you don't know what something means, definitely utilize the question mark button because it's going to let you know what that setting means. It's a great way to learn. It's just literally sitting there and hitting the question mark and reading what that setting means. It's great. Trash can. So you have the trash can. Well, obviously that's for deleting your images. Usually you'll hit once to delete and then it will ask you to verify and you'll have to do it again. So be very careful when you're deleting your images that you don't delete something that you want to use. Right above the trash can you have a, a light. Um, that is your access light. When you're reviewing images, you're going to see that blink because it's going to let you know that the camera is accessing your images or also that it's writing. Uh, you're gonna, when you take a picture, you'll see that light go on to, because it's going to write the files to the card. Now let's move to the top back of the camera. You've got the viewfinder. Obviously, you put your eye in the viewfinder to, to look through. Uh, you have a diopter next to it. That's for you guys who wear glasses or who want to correct your vision slightly in here to match you know, the focusing. So that's why you use the diopter. Next to that is the info button and another green dot. So let me talk about the green dots real quick. Being that there's one next to the menu button and this info button, if you held both of them in for three, I believe it's three seconds, it, and then it, you're going to see a blink and then you click it again, it's going to reset everything in your camera back to the factory reset. Uh, that's something you rarely do, uh, but the info button is great. You use the info button to access the on-screen menu, uh, on-screen info, being that you don't have an info uh, screen up top, you hit the info button on the back and you can see everything from your white balance, your ISO, uh, your how many frames a second you're going to shoot, your autofocus selections. So everything that you want will be on the back of the camera and it's menu driven. So you would just click this button, the info button, and you'll see everything from your battery power uh, to your apertures. And you'll even watch the spinny dial when you spin it, but we'll get to that in part two. You have your AE lock button. I rarely touch that, your autofocus lock um, and auto exposure lock. That's not something I personally get into, so I don't use it. Uh, you have a rotatable dial. This is the only rotatable dial that you have on the camera. So if you are in a mode like manual and you want to change the shutter speed, you're going to turn this back dial. If you're in a mode like shutter priority, you're going to turn the back dial and it's going to change the shutter speed. If you're in aperture priority, you're going to turn this back dial, it's going to change your aperture. But the question is, when you're in manual, how do you change not just your shutter speed, how do you change your aperture? Because if, you're, if the back dial is only tied to the one thing, what ties to the other? Well, there's a plus minus button as we move to the top of the camera. This plus minus button is your, is your exposure compensation. But if you're in manual mode and you press this button and hold it down and turn the back dial, you're going to change your aperture. So that's how you change your aperture because you don't have an extra dial up front. So live view, you see this little switch up top? You pull it back. When you pull it back, it's spring loaded. It's going to launch the it's going to actually open up the mirror, open the shutter, and now you're in live view mode to take still images or to take video. Next to, well, let's go in front of that. You have, an, you have the info, another info button, which turns on the back of the camera. So you have two info buttons on this camera. Uh, we talked about the exposure compensation mode. You'll also see that they finally put this, uh, it looks like an aperture on it. So it's a secondary button that tells you when you press that and turn this back dial, you're going to change your aperture. The red record button, it's pretty obvious most things for record are red buttons. You're going to press that button to start your record mode for your video. You're going to press that button to stop the record mode for your video. On and off switch, you flick it on, you flick it off. Pretty simple. The silver button here is what you use to autofocus. You hold it halfway down. When you're ready to shoot, you press the button, it takes an image, and there you go, you have the image for you. So on and off. Up top you have the dial. You'll see auto mode, which is your green mode, that's going to be full auto. You're going to see right below that a circle with a flash, basically do not shoot. It's going to say the flash will not pop up. It's auto, just that the flash won't pop up. Scene modes for different in-camera scene modes. You've got a portrait mode, you have a landscape mode, you have a little kid mode, which is for like portraits of kids. You have a running person, which is for sports or action and a macro setting. 
and then effects. Effects are what you're going to use when you're in video mode. There's a few different cool effects. There's the color thingamabobber. I'm going to explain that in part two. Then you have your manual, aperture priority, shutter priority, and program. Um, this is your flash. That's going to pop up. I don't have a lens on here, so I'm pretty sure it's not going to pop up. Yep, because no lens is attached, so it's not going to pop up. All right, but let's move to the right side of the camera, or sorry, the left side of the camera. You have a flash button. That's going to pop your flash up when you need it. It also controls your slow sync and other different types of flash settings. Below that is a function button. This is something you can set four different things to. You could set your ISO. I recommend setting your ISO to this button. So what's gonna happen is if you wanna change your ISO, you're gonna press this function button, turn the back dial, and you're gonna change your ISO from the back of the camera. Right above the D5100, you have your microphone for when you're recording audio. That's the, those three dots. That is when you're recording audio. That's what it's going to pick up. You've got this release button right here, and this release button is how you take your lenses on and off. You press the release, you turn the lens. When you put the lens on, you put the lens on, boom, you turn it until you hear the click. On the right hand, uh, right hand side now, you have another infrared receiver. You've got a light, and this is an autofocus light. It's going to help you focus in low light situations. You can turn that off or on from the menu mode. Um, so what else do we have on here? On the top of the camera, you have your speaker for playing back the audio. It's not going to be the greatest thing for playing back audio, but you can hear your audio from that speaker mode. On the bottom of the camera, you have your tripod, tripod socket. That's where you're going to put your hot shoe or, or this is where you mount the camera to a tripod. You have your battery holder. You flick this open. There's a clip in there. You push up, the battery pops out, and it can only go in one way. So boom, it clicks in, close the door, you're good to go. Here on the side, how do you open the door where your SD card goes? You just slide it, it pops open. To put a card in, there's only one way to do it. There's a picture on the inside. You line up the notch, you put it in, click, it goes in, click to come out, close it, you're good to go. Right, again, I did it. Left-hand side of the camera, you have different inputs. You have a GPS input if you wanted to put your GPS in. You have an AV out, which is a cord that it comes with. So that's this cord right here. It has a yellow and a white. So you've got audio and you've got the white, which is video. This will plug into your TV. You can also purchase separately an HDMI cable to, um, to uh, what is it, to watch on a HD TV. It comes with a USB cable, which you can use to plug right into the side of the camera here to offload your images. And then, really cool on this camera is a mic input. So you can get something like the Nikon ME1, which is gonna give you better audio than the built-in, or you can get some extra or different types of microphones, boom mics and, and shotgun mics, or a wireless mic like I am wearing. That all goes in here on the side. So really, that is a, is a is, well, that's not, not a very quick rundown, but it's a rundown of what each function, what each button does, how it works, uh, and just to get you familiarized with it. In part two, I'm going to go through the menu. You're going to see me go through the menu and explain what each thing does in a little more detail than what the uh, question mark does in the camera. But really, now that you have this camera, proper, you know, when it comes to battery recharging, it's always good to recharge the battery when it's run down. Uh, but being that these lithium ion batteries do not have memories, you can recharge them at any point. It doesn't matter. I always say that if you're not going to be shooting or you're, you're shooting, let it run down. If you, have, if you need to get more battery charge in there, throw it on the charger. It comes with the charger. Uh, you, you really don't need to worry about you know, your battery going bad. Just, I recommend not leaving it on the charger. Once it's charged, take it off. There's no reason to leave it on there to trickle, to keep cycling through and keep putting, you know, lose some power, put some power on. It's just the best battery thing to do is just let it charge, take it off, recharge it when you need it to recharge, and you're good to go. Um, when you're changing lenses, turn off the camera. That's gonna save you from basically getting dust in the camera and getting spots and, and things like that on your camera. So. If you're not using the camera, keep a lens on it or keep the, this front cap on it. When you're not using the lenses, keep the back caps and, and, caps, uh, and lens cap on it. It's simple stuff, but 
you know, you'll get used to it. So remember, turn the camera off when you're changing lenses so that you don't let dust into the camera that could possibly get onto your sensor and cause you some issues. So I think that's about it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave comments under the video. I will do my best to get back to them. But definitely subscribe to the channel or sign up and sign up for the Fronos Photo email list because you'll get exclusive information just for being on the email list as well as the free ebook uh, that you'll get automatically when you sign up. So click up in this box for part two to see what the menus are and how to go through the menu system. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya!